So in this session, we're going to finish off our King of Fishes story, and we're going to create our own wish story. So in order to be able to create our own version of the story, we could be able to answer this question. What is the structure of a wish tale? What are the different parts that we would expect to see in a normal wish tale? Because if we're going to create our own, we need to follow this structure. Just like if I wanted to do a Western film, I'd need to have cowboys in it. Just as if I wanted to write a book on that, a science fiction book, I'd need to set it in future or somewhere in space. There's certain things that I need to include. So for a wish tale, what do I need to include? Well, the first thing is my main character needs to really want something. Doesn't matter what it is, they need to need it, they need to want it, because this is going to be the thing that you're going to presume they're going to start wishing for. Now, we're not going to make it easy for the main character to get this, but we need to see that it's not easy. So the main character is going to try and get what they want. However, if we just let the main character get what they want, it's not much of a story. So we're going to put a barrier in its way, an obstacle that our main character is going to have to try and overcome, something that's going to stop them from getting that original thing that they really, really want. And of course, because it's our main character, because we want them to succeed, we're going to overcome that barrier in some way. And by overcoming that barrier, it's going to allow that main character to get that thing that they wish for, that thing they really, really wanted at the beginning of our story. And most of the time, that means we're going to finish our story with our happily ever after, where the main character gets to live the life of their dreams. However, sometimes we might decide that's not going to happen and getting what they wished for isn't all that's cracked up to bed. Now, when we look at the story of the King of the Fishers, we can see it follows a similar pattern to that idea of a typical wishing tale. And we can see that our first thing is Lee is a poor fisherman. So our plot pattern and thing that we're going to try and keep in our story, our main character is going to be poor. Then we're going to have in our King of Fishes, Lee catches the King of Fishes but chooses to put it back. So our plot pattern that we're going to try and include for us, so we've got the main character is poor, the next thing we want our story to be is telling us about how his main character rescues an animal that is the King of Queen off its count. In our original text, the King of Fishes grants Lee one wish. And in our plot pattern, we can see that the animal grants the main character one wish as a reward for rescuing them. Next, we move on to Lee asking each member of his family what they would wish for. He struggles to decide. This is the part where he can't quite decide what he wants to have. So our plot pattern is going to be showing the main character struggling to decide what they wanted to then we move on to the idea that Lee comes up with this ingenious idea of combining all three wishes from his family into one. And he asks the King of Fishes for that wish. And in our plot pattern, the main character chooses their wish and the animal is going to grant that wish. This gets us to the ending for our story where everyone is happy and Lee is now rich. And the plot pattern shows us that our story, our wish tales, needs to finish in a similar way, with all being well and the main character benefiting from that wish. Now here you can see a story plan. So I've used the idea of King of Fishes, I've looked at that plot point and the patterns, and now what I've done is I've decided to plan my new story. This one hugs very closely to the model. I've actually changed very, very little. So take a look at this. You'll find a copy of this actually on the website under a link to have an explore. So in this story I've kept close to that plot pattern. So the main character is poor, so my version has Zoe as a poor oyster diver. The plot pattern tells me that main character is going to rescue an animal that's going to be king or queen of his kind. So he captures an oyster and happens to be queen of the oysters and places the oyster back in the water. The animal grants the main character one wish, the oyster grants Zoe one wish, and so on. So I'm hugging very closely to the idea, almost to the point where all I've really done is changed the main character, changed the animal, changed the three wishes. The rest of the story matches very closely to the King of the Fishes, which I've been able to take away from King of the Fishes by just focusing on that plot pattern. So when you're thinking about your plan, think about how you can use that plot pattern to scaffold what you're doing to keep that story the same way so like i say the, probably the easiest way of doing this is to hug the plot change the character's name change their profession change the animal they cut change the wishes they have 
and then you've got the same story but in your own innovative style. So this is where you've got some options. Option one, go onto the website and take the hooked story plan. That's the one where it's very, very similar, but you'll still be able to make it yourself. Your second choice, take the shaking hands. It's very close to the original, but you can, you can start seeing the individuality on it. And the third option, if you're feeling really super confident and you've got a really great idea, just simply take the plot patterns, design your own story. Don't take long on this. If you're spending more than 10 or 15 minutes to actually plan this story, you're probably overthinking it and you're probably actually writing the story itself. Just key points, just like you can see on the model, which is in, on the screen in front of you. And like I say, there's no harm in you going straight to the hooked version, straight to the shaking hands version and using ideas that are already there. Alternatively, if you do have better ideas, you've got something more original that you'd like to use, then just keep those plot points, that plot point pattern in your mind. So now let's start thinking about how we can actually turn this pl plan into an actual story. So now it's time to write our own story. So let's work through this together. I've started with my opening and I'm going to use my boxed up planner to help me do this. And I can be looking back at the actual model text if I need to, just to remind myself. But in this very open, this very first section, the opening, I want to introduce my main character and show the reader that they are poor. Then I want to provide a little bit of detail about the character's daily life by using a front of the which could be frequency or time. So that grammar objective we've looked at. Now looking at my boxed up plan, I know that I've got Zoe as a poor oyster diver. So that's my first thing. So introduce your main character and show how the reader that they are poor. So I'm going to be talking about this poor oyster diver named Zoe. Then I need to provide a little bit about their daily life. So an oyster diver dives into the water, collects shells, has a look for the, uh, the oysters in them, takes them to market and sells them. So that's my basic idea at the moment. So now I'm going to start trying to put that again together. So there was once a poor oyster diver named Zoe. Every single day, she would go down to the seashore look out at the water before diving in and searching the ocean bed looking for shells. Once she'd filled her sack full of oyster shells she then dashed to market to sell them as soon as she could. And I can carry on building these ideas and building these ideas until I'm ready to actually start writing. So now I've put this down in writing and this is the version I have at the moment. A long time ago in a land of sea and stars, there lived a poor oyster diver named Zoe. When the tide was right, she went deep, deep down into the sea to catch oysters. There she would swim desperately searching for secret shells. After her dive, she would take her catch to the market to sell the coins. I've introduced my main character. I've shown them that they're, they're poor. And then I've provided a little bit of detail about their daily life and if we look very closely we can see that I've got those fronted adverbials and we can see that these ones are about well the first one could be frequent to your time whenever the tide was right or in this case the time is when the tide was right and then my other one is a time one after her dive so you can see I've put these things together to create my opening now my recommendation to you now is to pause this keep those two ideas in front of you Keep my model and write your opening. Get it down quickly. Don't spend too long over thinking about it because we can come back and we can redraft it. Because once you've written this paragraph, that's when we can go back to it the same as I can do now, where I can check mine for spelling and punctuation. I can see straight away, right at the very end, I'm lacking my full stop. And it's only by looking back at it that I'm able to identify that. Think about, do you have your capital letters? Think about your full stops. When you're thinking about your fronted adverbials, have you included your commas? Or have you omitted those? Think about those noun phrases. Are you using some nice adjectives? I'm looking at mine at the moment. I can see secret shells I'm quite happy with. I'm not really happy with my C. I think it needs a better description. I'm thinking my oysters needs a better description. 
So I can see straight away looking at this, but should I spend a little bit longer now, now it's written, I can get those different ideas. So pause this and continue to write the beginning of your own so I can see what your opening is going to be like. And then come and join me for our next section. So now we've written our opening, let's move on to the second section where we meet our new character. And again, we'll use your boxed up planner, whether you're using the hugged version, the shaking hands version or your own. But make sure you're referring back to that before you write anything at the moment, because that's going to really, really help you. And look back at the model text to see what strategies the original author had. Because in this section, what I want you to do is to introduce the new character who is helped in some way by this main character. Then I also want you to do is to describe this new character in detail. So use that power of three idea that we had from the very beginning of this unit, where we used three different pieces of description in our writing. Now, looking at my box up plan, I know that Zoe's going to catch an oyster. This is my new character. It's the queen of the oysters. I'm going to want to describe her in some way. So this is going to be on one of her fishing expeditions. There's going to be something different about this oyster, which means that she's going to want to investigate and explore it a little bit more. I'm then going to give myself that power of three sentence to describe exactly what this thing looked like. And then I want Zoe to put the oyster back. So I've got to decide when this is going to happen. I'm going to start my front end of One morning, early one morning, one night, as the moon shone, in the black sky as the stars glittered above Zoe grabbed a strange oyster she felt an overwhelming need to look inside it so opened it up it was golden and it shimmered in the moonlight and a beautiful song emitted from it as it opened. Zoe was amazed by what she heard and what she saw, so instantly placed it delicately back on the seabed. I'm going to play around with that a little bit before I decide what I write. I'm going to carry on saying it to myself. And then I'm going to be able to put pen to paper. And this is what I'm going to write. One night, open, opening with a front of the one night, she caught an unusually large oyster expanded noun phrase i've got some adjectives to go with it she couldn't help herself and she peeked inside i've given you the reason why she's looking inside and i've thought about the verb that i'm using i don't want her just to look i don't want her to glance i want her to sort of peek as if it's a naughty thing she's doing now i've got my description it had diamonds on its shell that glittered in the moonlight i've used that relative clause with the vat a shimmering pearl and an angelic voice as the oyster sang its mournful moan some alliteration, some really powerful vocabulary, that mournful moan, mournful meaning something sad, moan, sort of that painful idea. Zoe froze in the water. She was mesmerised. Now think about the meaning of that word. I've not just gone, she was impressed, she was happy, she was excited, she's mesmerised. I can picture her sort of unable to move, just sort of entranced by what was happening instantly from to the verbial telling you how quickly this happened she realized that she couldn't take the oyster so she placed it back on the seabed now i'm going to pause there because now i've done my two sections but what you will find on the website is section three section four and section five and section six the rest of them with those little ideas to help you and that's what i want you to be thinking about Plotting that story, going back to that box, going back to that model, and then just writing. Don't get overly complicated with it. Notice how each one of my sections, only a few sentences. I'm answering those ideas, but I'm making sure I'm using my front of the verbials to sequence, and I'm using my expanded noun phrases to describe, and my power free to describe even more. So get writing, and I really look forward to reading your wish story. Good luck.